Hello, this is Mark with Courtroom Visuals Consulting. Welcome to my podcast, PowerPoint for the Courtroom, Doing It the Right Way. It's a video podcast hosted on Spotify for podcasters. This is the trailer for episode 14. In episode 14, we cover a couple different things. We cover bullet points and then comparison and contrast charts specifically. For those of you who have used bullet points before, either in Microsoft Word or in PowerPoint, you may have noticed that, especially in PowerPoint, when you create a single text box with, say, six bullet points, when you click, all six points come up, either all at the same time or maybe one right after the other. Well, there are settings in PowerPoint that will uh, allow you to pull up a bullet point one at a time. Not only to pull up a bullet point one at a time, But in the middle of some bullet points, you can actually start incorporating some of your digital media, photographs, documents, audio files, video files, anything that you have to support your argument to the jury as you're going through this list of bullet points. We're going to go through comparison and contrast charts as well, uh, comparing uh, uh, some evidence from different locations. Uh, Specifically, in, in our example, we're going to be using some DNA. Uh, a contrast chart uh, contrasting the testimony of somebody in the case versus the real facts or the real evidence right so starting with bullet points let's say you're the you're the defense in a civil case and you want to argue to the jury that the plaintiff has failed to prove something in this particular case as example that they failed to prove causation right so you start with your bullet points and again this is a single text box with a series of bullet points but I've set it up so that only one bullet point comes up at a time and not only one bullet point comes up at a time but I can also weave my digital media into this argument in between bullet points so whatever my point one is if I have a photograph that supports it there's my gun there's my fired evidence uh, that supports point one and now I've, I've kind of interrupted my bullet points because the next click should be point two, but I've set it up so that the photograph shows first. Right? Then there's point two, I make my argument, make my argument with point three, and let's say with point three I've got not only a photograph, but some audio that supports what I'm saying. Again, I can weave that into this text box that contains my, my bullet points. <laughs> Okay. And I've got my point four, my point five, all right, and each point is coming up on a click here, and my point six, and maybe I've got video to support point six. So I've got point six showing, and then there's some video to support point six, okay? So in episode 14, we're going to show you how to set up a bullet point argument like this one where you can pull up each point one at a time without having to do six different text boxes and also weave your digital media into your bullet points at the same time we're going to cover a contrast chart Uh, in this particular example uh, we're going to be contrasting the plaintiff's testimony with what we say is the truth what we say the the actual evidence shows And this is a very simple chart that can be created in PowerPoint with just some shapes and some text boxes. So we've got the plaintiff's testimony contrasted with the facts. And again, I'm not going to detail them out here. Uh, I'm just showing you how it can be set up. And again, you can weave your digital media into this chart. See, there's a photograph here that supports what I'm saying when I'm telling the jury about fact two. Now remember, the whole concept of the visual trial is backing up the spoken word with visual evidence. Anytime I can back up what I'm saying in my closing argument with something visual, then it's got to be true and the jury has to believe what I'm saying. So then we've got statement three and fact three, and let's say fact three is supported by perhaps some video. You can weave that into your contrast chart to support what you're saying to the jury in your closing argument. You move on to, you know, plaintiff's testimony 
they said this, but this, these are the real facts here. And you just go on and on until you're done with that portion of your argument. Right? That's a real simple contrast chart. Right? We're also going to go through how to create comparison charts. And you can do a comparison chart much like this one here, uh, this contrast chart, you know, just using simple shapes that are in PowerPoint, lines and things like that, and kind of make your own chart. Uh, but you can also, in PowerPoint, insert a table. And if you've never worked with a table before, it's just a predefined set of columns and rows. As many columns as you need and as many rows as you need to create a table. And PowerPoint allows you to insert and format a table onto your PowerPoint slide. For our example here, we're going to be talking about DNA. And just for the sake of this one slide, let's say there's only four loci or alleles where DNA is shown to exist. Now, we all know there's a whole lot more than that, but just for this example here, kind of a rudimentary example, you know, across our top row, we've got our headers, so to speak. You know, the header over every, every column. Low size column number one. Uh, the DNA genetic profile of a person is column number two. That's compared to blood at the scene in column number three and compared to DNA recovered from a gun that was at the scene in column number four. And then there's your data, right? That first column that the four different loci or alleles in the DNA when it was tested. And you see the genetic profile of our person there in column number two. Column number three, you see it matches on all four loci to the blood at the scene, and at least two of the four loci to DNA found on the gun. Right? That's kind of a simple chart right here for comparison purposes, and it's probably not too much data where it's overwhelming, too much maybe for the jury to see. However, if you look at this next table, I didn't put any real data in here, but just, just the word data, you can see how a chart with this much information could be a little bit overwhelming for your jury. A little bit too much to see. And there's a couple different ways to handle that because you really don't want to overwhelm your jurors with too much information because they're just not going to be able to digest it all. Or they're going to be looking at something in uh, column three, row eight, while you're talking about something in column two, row six, and uh, they're not going to be listening to what you're saying. And there's things we can do in PowerPoint to kind of help the jurors look at what we need them to look at during that part of our argument. Here's another example of that same kind of table, and there's more than five rows in this example. In fact, I think there's seven here, but I can make it so it moves and the jurors can focus on just a little bit of information at one time. But even with DNA, there's more than seven loci that you're usually going to have to present, and you could get uh, a much more complex table or chart that you need to present. In this particular example, I have 19 rows. And if I tried to fit that all in one slide, we have two problems. You're overwhelming the jurors with too much information, and it's going to be such a large table, a font, in order to fit all this on one slide, it's going to be so small, it's going to be hard for your jury to see. So instead, we use this same table, and by using some movement, similar to the one you saw on the slide before this, I can force the jurors with movement and shapes to only look at one row at a time while I'm making my argument. So now we have this. And this is probably going to be moving a little bit faster than I would like for the jury to see it, but I don't want to spend this whole trailer really trying to digest data, but you kind of get the point here. The jurors are only really only looking at the one row that's not blocked out with the yellow. Now at some point, I'm gonna to get to about as high as I can get. 
I'm just going to change my moving a little bit where now the yellow panels are going to start moving down to show the rest of the rows. Two different ways you can isolate a row and force the jurors to look at the row you want them to see during the course of your argument. Okay, so that is uh, episode 14. Show you how to create those cool bullet points and weave some digital media into them. Uh, a very simple contrast chart, which also can be used for comparison purposes. And then uh, a little bit more complex comparison charts using tables, movement, and shading to force the jurors to look at various things on your slide. Okay, if you like what you see, check out the full episode. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. I hope you like what you're seeing. I hope to see you again in the future. Again, this is Mark with Courtroom Visuals Consulting. We'll see you soon. Thanks.